ABC Kids Listen recognizes Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples as the first peoples of this place, now known as Australia. We are grateful for the continuing care of the lands, waterways and skies, where we listen, learn and play. From here on, Derek Country, where I love to go for bushwalks and listen out for the kookaburra's laughing call and look for the eastern water dragon slinking around by the river. And from wherever you are listening, we respect the elders of the past and present and we share our friendship and kindness. Hi, I'm Alex. It's story time. Hasn't it been a great day so far? Now it's time to relax in your favourite relaxy spot and listen to the terrific tales we've found for you today. <laughs> Mary, a sweet little bunny. Mary, a smart little bunny. Mary, a cute little bunny. Grunty Snuffy, all our friends have come to play. On adventures big or adventures small, we're gonna have a wonderful day. Maybe a sweet little bunny, maybe I think she's really funny. Maybe it always feels sunny. You're in a hurry this morning, Miffy. Yes. Poppy's taking me bowling with Grunty and Melanie. That sounds like fun. <laughs> Do you like bowling? I don't know. I've never done it before. Melanie, Grunty. Hello, Hello Miffy. Miffy. Ready to go bowling? I am. I've been practising all week. How? You haven't got a bowling ball. Easy, watch. First, you pick up the ball like this. Then pull back like this, then let go, like this. <laughs> Are you sure that's how you're supposed to do it, Grunty? I'll be better with a real ball. Oh, hello, girls. Hello, hello Poppy. Poppy. Well, now we're all here. Let's go bowling. Yay! Yay! I can't wait. Come on. We don't want to miss the bus. We're on the bus, driving fast, watching things go whizzing past. There goes a tree! There goes a cow! There goes Nuffy Bow Wow Wow! <laughs> We're on the bus, zooming along, watching the world and singing a song. Look, a flower! Look, a horse! Why are we stopping? We're, We're there, there, of course! course. We're here! Come on! <laughs> <laughs> look, look! <laughs> you need to put these special shoes on to go bowling. Oh, shoes? Ooh. How funny! I think I'll practice again with these shoes on. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Maybe we should save your moves for the bowling lane, Grunty. This way. Is this where we do the bowling? That's right. You take a ball from here and try and knock down those pens. They're a long way away. Don't worry, Melanie. I'll show you how to do it. And I'll have a nice sit down over here. A shout if you need me. Why don't you go first, Miffy? OK. Oh. <laughs> it's heavy. <laughs> oh. Oh. <sighs> well done, Miffy. Not bad. Now it's my turn. Move your arm a bit more, Melanie. I can do it on my own, thank you, Grunty. Huh. <sighs> Oh, bad luck, Melanie. If Grunty hadn't distracted me, I'd have knocked them all over. Sorry, Melanie. I was only trying to help. Your turn, Grunty. Mm-hmm. Huh? Huh. Let's get ready to pick her up again. 
If you knock everything down at once. <laughs> Strike! I think you were lucky that time. Can you show me how you did that, Grunty? First, you pick up the ball and pull back like this. Then let go, like this. Right, OK. Ah. Oh. <gasps> Much better! Thanks, Grunty. Hmm. Shall I show you too, Melanie? No, thank you, Grunty. I can do it myself. Ugh. Hmm. Never mind, Melanie. But did somebody lose this? It's not fair. It must be broken. No, you just need to... I think it might be time for some lunch. This way, girls. Yes, lunch! your carrot burger, Melanie. Mm. I can't believe Grunty's better than me. She's so clumsy. Oh. I think it's nice. She's found something she's good at. But does she have to show off by telling us all how to do it? It's stuck. <laughs> Here, you don't unscrew it. You flip it. Like this. <gasps> Thanks, Melanie. That's really helpful. You see, you showed Granty how to do it. You helped her. Oh, yes. I was helping her. Not being a show-off. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Strike. Well done, Miffy. All thanks to you, Granty. Well done, Miffy. Can you show me how to bowl like you, please, Grunty? Sure. You just pull your arm back and then let go. Thanks, Grunty. <sighs> yes! Strike! See? That was really good. My turn. Stand back. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Wonderful listening. Grug and his kite. Grug was flying his kite when a strong gust of wind blew it away. Grug made a new kite and tied it to a flat piece of wood. He stood on the piece of wood so it would not blow away. Grug held on tight, but a very strong wind came. The kite pulled Grug into the sky. The kite dived, then turned and did loop the loop. The kite swooped between the trees, pulling Grug along with it and startled an eagle sitting on a branch. The eagle flew after the kite and perched on it. The kite and Grug dropped gently to the ground. Grug untied the kite string and waved goodbye to the eagle and the kite as they flew off into the sky. Now, more story time on ABC Kids Listen. It's time for a story. Today's story is called Once Upon a Small Rhinoceros, and it goes like this. Once there was a small rhinoceros who wanted to see the big world. Every day, boats sailed past on the nearby river. They brought smells and sights and sounds from faraway lands, and the small rhinoceros dreamed. Around her, the other rhinoceroses wallowed in the mud and bathed in the sun. 
They grazed on grass and rubbed their horns against trees. They did all the things that rhinoceroses do. From the muddy riverbank, the small rhinoceros watched the boats and sighed. Don't you wish, she said, that you could see the world? A mud-wallowing rhinoceros snorted. But this is the world. We have mud and grass and trees. We have everything a rhinoceros could possibly need. Yes, said the small rhinoceros. We do. A grass-grazing rhinoceros shook his head. You're a rhinoceros. You belong here. Yes, said the small rhinoceros. That's true. But still she dreamed. And the river flowed on and the boats passed by. Until one day, the small rhinoceros looked around her and smiled. She gathered wood and twigs and grass. She sawed and tied and hammered, and she built her very own boat. A tree-scratching rhinoceros frowned. You're a rhinoceros. You can't sail a boat. Yes, said the small rhinoceros. You're right. A sunbathing rhinoceros rolled his eyes. You're a rhinoceros. You can't row or steer or read a map. Yes, said the small rhinoceros. I know. On the riverbank, all the mud-wallowing, grass-grazing, tree-scratching, sun-bathing rhinoceroses gathered in alarm. <coughs> Come back, they called. It's dangerous. You'll get lost. Perhaps, said the small rhinoceros. And she waved as she sailed around the bend, out of sight. Out on the ocean, the water was a deep, dazzling blue. Sea spray stung the air and foam fizzed on the tip of the waves. The small rhinoceros trailed a hoof into the water and tasted salt. She stared dreamily down to the deep. During the day, fish flashed beside the boat, then sank far out of sight. At night, stars floated on the ocean's dark surface. The small rhinoceros watched the water, let the waves rock her to sleep, and she sailed on. Through the woolly wild of winter and the smooth sweep of summer, to faraway lands and beyond. She saw mud and grass and trees. She saw spectacular sights with surprising smells and sounds. And more things than a rhinoceros could ever have imagined. And when she had seen all she could see, she turned homeward and set her sail to catch the wind. The other rhinoceroses were waiting just where she had left them. With their mud and grass and trees. She told them about the things she had seen and smelled and heard. Wasn't it strange, they asked. Yes, said the small rhinoceros. And scary? Sometimes. That's what we thought. They turned back to their mud and grass and trees. But then a soft voice spoke up. Did you get lost? Many times. And was it wonderful? Oh yes, said the small rhinoceros. It was. That's what I thought, said the even smaller rhinoceros. And she dreamed. And that's the end of the story.
Let's listen to another story. Story time! Because we're going to do the story right now. Hello, my name is David, and this is Little Ted. Welcome to Story Time. I'm going to read you a story. I wonder what the story will be about today, little Ted. Did you hear that? That was the sound of the magic story drawer. Oh, let's see what's inside. It's a little polar bear. A polar bear lives in the Arctic, a very cold place. Now the story today is called the bear. Who went boo? And there's a baby polar bear on the cover, and the story goes like this: At the top of the world lived a very cheeky polar bear. He doesn't look too cheeky. He looks like a very nice young polar bear. He was only little, but he loved giving the other animals a big fright. Slowly and silently, he would creep up behind them before going. Boo! The poor creatures would shriek as the little cub would roll around, hooting with laughter. <laughs> Maybe he is a cheeky polar bear. The little cub's mama would ask him time and time again, "How would you like it if someone went boo to you?" But he wouldn't listen. All the little cub longed for was to be big and fearsome, like his papa. One morning, a helicopter was spotted in the sky. News spread across the ice that a man was coming to the Arctic to make a television show. The animals were going to be famous. They began making themselves look beautiful for the cameras. A wrinkly walrus wanted to top up his tan. He decided to sunbathe in the nude. The little cub crept up behind the walrus. Boom! Ah! The walrus was so shocked he kicked up his back flippers. His tusks became skis, and he zoomed across the snow. Whiz! Meanwhile. A platoon of puffins preened their feathers. Time to do boo too. Boo! Startled, the puffins all tried to take flight at once. Wings walloped, beaks bashed, caw 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 caw, and the poor birds crashed headfirst into an iceberg. Wallop! There was no stopping the little cub now. Next. He sawed a hole in the ice sheet with his paw before diving down into the freezing water below. Time to do an underwater boo, but to who? The little cub spied a pair of killer whales practicing a synchronized swimming routine, ready for the cameras. Boo! The killer whales smashed through the ice sheet, up, up, up into the air. Blop, 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 blop. Onto the ice, then the more blubbery of the two landed on top of his poor friend. Boing, boing, boing. As the sun was setting over the Arctic, the cheeky little cub spotted a very odd-looking animal he had never seen before. It's the man doing the television show. He's talking about one of the animals. This、uh, snowy owl. There's the cheeky little cub. What's he going to do? He couldn't resist one final boo. The poor man leapt backwards and fell with a giant plop into the sea. No! Splash! The water was so cold that when he clambered out, he was encased in a block of ice. The man was furious. His face glowed bright red like a tomato, and the ice soon began to melt. In all my years, I have never met such a badly behaved animal. I've had an octopus tickle me, been sat on by a rhinoceros, and 
Once a family of gorillas ate my underpants, but you are the worst. Right, I'm reporting you. Species? Um, um, penguin, fibbed the little cub. You are not a penguin. Penguins live in the Antarctic, not the Arctic. OK, um, polar bear. Yes, and a tiny one at that. Well, you have ruined it for all the other animals. I am not making my television show here now. What? I'll go to the Antarctic and make one about penguins. People like penguins. Penguins are nice. Oh, dear. The animals are not going to be happy about this. As the little calf watched the helicopter leave, all the animals gathered. Now they were going to miss their moment of fame. It's time to teach that little bear a big lesson, said the walrus. That night, the little cub trudged slowly back home. But as he entered his snow cave... Oh! The little cub's fur stood up on end, as if he'd been hit by a bolt of lightning. Ah! Mama Bear was right. He didn't like it one bit. The little cub had learned a big lesson. From that moment on, he promised never, ever to go boo again. Well, maybe one last time. Boo! Oh, that cheeky little polar bear. He gave us all a big fright, didn't he? What's that, little Ted? Yes. I enjoyed the story too. But I hope that bear doesn't do boo anymore. Well, it's time for us to go now. So bye from little Ted and bye from me. Bye-bye. Yes, I'd love to come back and do another story. Get your listening ears ready. It's time for another story. Which story would you like today, Hoot? Oh, oh can you tell the one about your favourite toy? Oh, I think everyone will love that. You know, the one where you're a little boy. But I've told you that story so many times. Yeah, that's because it's such a good story. <laughs> oh, OK, Hoot. Let's begin. Jimmy's favourite toy. It was a lovely day in the land of Giggle and Hoot. Jimmy was excited. He was going to visit Grandpa Giggle. And this was going to be his very first night away from home. Jimmy loved Grandpa's house as it was always full of surprises. Grandpa Giggle hardly ever threw anything away. Why would I throw it away? I can always use it for something else. And it was true. His hats became garden pots. His old coat went to the scarecrow and used jam jars were a perfect fit for buttons. Grandpa Giggle was very clever. It was late afternoon when Jimmy arrived at Grandpa's house. Grandpa came out to meet him. Jimmy, he said, you're just in time. I thought I'd show you the attic. Jimmy was excited. He hadn't been in the attic before. He followed Grandpa up the rickety old stairs that led to the very top of the house. Grandpa stopped at the door. You go first, he said. Jimmy peeped in and saw the most amazing sight. The room was full of toys. Wow! Grandpa, this is so cool! Grandpa giggled, laughed. <laughs> They're mine! I've kept them since I was a little boy, just the same age as you. Jimmy raced over to a train set and started to play. He watched as the engines went around and around the tracks. <laughs> went the trains. <laughs> Jimmy, the train sounds just like me! It does sound like you, Hoot! <laughs> there were teddy bears and jigsaws and even a jack-in-the-box that went... Boom! But, but it was a funny scare, so, so I'm OK. Jimmy was having the best time. Oh, Grandpa, you have so many toys, he said. Oh, yes, I do have lots of toys. 
But my very favourite toy was lost a long time ago. Grandpa told Jimmy all about a toy he used to take to bed every night. I loved that toy, but one day I couldn't find it anywhere. For a moment, Grandpa looked a little sad. But never mind, he said. I'm too old for toys now. That night, Jimmy tried to sleep. He liked staying at Grandpa's house, but somehow it wasn't quite like sleeping in his own bed. There were lots of new noises to get used to. Oh, 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 Jimmy Diggle, can I do the noises? Of course you can, Hoot. The tree tapped against the window. Tap, tap, tap. The floorboards creaked. And Grandpa Giggle snored very loudly. This is my favourite. As Jimmy tried to sleep, he thought of Grandpa's favourite toy and wondered where it could be. He decided that in the morning he would look behind all the cushions in the house. Oh, that's a great idea, Jimmy Giggle. Toys are always hiding behind the cushions. But now he needed to get some sleep. He curled up in a ball and then stretched out tall. He was just beginning to get into the perfect position when he felt a lump under his mattress at the bottom of the bed. He wondered what the lump could be. It's uh, bigger than a sock, thought Jimmy, and smaller than a football. Hmm. He carefully climbed out of bed and slipped his hand under the mattress. Oh, this is exciting! Using all his strength, Jimmy tugged and tugged. Then, one, two, three... Out came something very unusual. It was a purple dinosaur with two big brown eyes and a very long neck. Sounds like... Jimmy was so excited. He loved dinosaurs. He tucked the toy under his arm and hopped back into bed. And as if by magic, Jimmy fell asleep straight away. Oh, oh, I don't want to spoil the story, but I think I know who you found. The next morning, Jimmy woke to see Grandpa Giggle smiling down at him. What have you got there, Jimmy Giggle? Jimmy showed him the dinosaur. Grandpa Giggle clapped his hands in delight. It's Gigglosaurus! You've found my favourite toy! Yay! <laughs> oh, Jimmy, I knew it! It's Gigglosaurus! You're right, Hoot, it was Gigglosaurus! Jimmy was happy that he'd found Grandpa's favourite toy. But then he felt a little bit sad as he knew what he had to do. Jimmy gave Gigglosaurus a little goodbye squeeze. Here you go, Grandpa. This is your toy. Grandpa held Gigglosaurus for a while and then he shook his head. Oh, I'm too old for toys nowadays. I think Gigglosaurus should stay with you. Jimmy reached out for the toy. Wow, thank you, Grandpa. But you have to watch him very carefully. He can be very hard to find. From that day on, Jimmy always takes Gigglosaurus to bed. And whenever Gigglosaurus goes missing, it's never long before Jimmy finds him again. You're my favourite toy, he says, cuddling him tight. And as if by magic, he falls fast asleep. you got Gigglosaurus. That's right, Hoot. That's how I got my very favourite toy. Ah, how relaxing. I feel ready for a nice nap. How about you? Thank you for listening to Storytime. Hear more terrific tales on digital radio and the ABC Kids Listen app.